Here we are again, ready for the next tutorial. And for this tutorial, I'd like to share with you the quiz module. There's a lot to discuss with this, so let's get started. From my course homepage, I'm going to turn editing on, go to the block where my quiz will appear, go to activities, and select quiz. To start, I'm going to give my quiz a name. The description is not required, but if you want to enter something here, go right ahead. Then we get to the timing. By enabling these options, you can choose to have the quiz only be open for a certain amount of time. Enabling the time limit, a timer is displayed on the quiz navigation block. Then select what you want to have happen when time expires. There are three options ranging from nothing gets submitted to allowing a grace period where students can only submit to forcing everything to that point be submitted. Grading options include a category. Select uh, the, that category here if you have those set up in your Moodle gradebook. But this is also where you can allow multiple attempts on your quiz. Should you allow that, make sure your grading method reflects what you want to have happen. Will you, accept, will you accept the highest grade, the average, or maybe the last attempt? On to the layout. Here's where you determine how the questions will appear on the screen. Changing the question order to shuffle randomly will shuffle the questions that the students see and then determine how many questions you want on each page. The question behavior determines how the answers are displayed. If you shuffle the answers, make sure you don't have answer choices of both B and C or all of the above. How questions behave is how students get feedback from the quiz. Leaving this set as deferred feedback will force the kids to answer each question and submit the quiz before getting any feedback, should you even want any displayed. The review options look to have a lot going on, but the breakdown is this. You can select to give feedback during the quiz, immediately after the quiz when the students have just clicked submit and finish, later while the quiz is still open, just not immediately after the fact, and finally after the quiz is closed, in which case the students won't get feedback until after your end date and the time given on the quiz. Then determine what they get feedback on. The attempt, what kind of feedback you want to give, the right answer, or even just generic overall feedback. Let me say that with all of this, you type in the specific feedback you want to provide for each question you enter. At this point, if you aren't interested in giving feedback, just skip this for now, but know that it's an option and it's here. In scrolling on down, we get to the display options, and this is where you will apply the number of decimal points to uh, each place in the grade. Don't worry about the user picture, that doesn't really apply to us since we don't upload pictures from Infinite Campus into Moodle. And then the extra restrictions on attempts are features that you can set up if you allow multiple attempts on your quizzes. The ones that most likely will apply are the enforce delay options because this will require a certain amount of time before the students can attempt the quiz again. And then next is overall feedback. This is where you enter the feedback students will receive from you according to their overall percentage grade. For example, notice the first grade boundary is set to 100%. If I set the second boundary to 90%, and then if I plug in some general feedback in this area, say great job, 
That means any student that scores between a 91 and a 100% on my quiz is going to get my general feedback of great job. You can continue setting up the boundaries and the type of overall feedback uh, that you want displayed upon the quiz completion in the, these areas. So I'm going to keep scrolling. Um, there, of course, are grouping and restriction options, but for now, let's just save and display this. Because here is where we start to build the quiz. So let's click the Edit Quiz button. Before going further, I want to point out the categories. By default, a quiz category will be built with the title according to the name of your quiz. Another reminder here, to title the quiz is something unique yet specific. My tech quiz example probably wasn't the best example. But if I would have titled it something like September tech quiz, that would have, start, that would have been a bit more descriptive. It's these categories that you can use as future quiz item banks, as well as pull from while setting up review games in the games module. If you're focused up front, it will save a lot of time later on. So let's get some questions in, and then we'll look at categorizing them. I'm going to click create a new, whoops, sorry, I'm gonna click create a new question. And from this window, I can select a type of question to insert. Once I select an option, I'll also see a short description of what it is that this type of question does. For my example, I'm just going to select multiple choice and then click next. There we go. Again, here's where your category name comes into play. As you start to get more and more um, types of categories, you'll have more options to dump your questions into. I am going to uh, set up the uh, question name and enter the question text. Okay, you can see my question name was something very short and descriptive for me to reference. The question text is exactly what it is that my students are going to read. As I scroll down, notice that you have a couple of options for feedback. Uh, the general feedback is the um, feedback that the students will get just in general about the quiz, not problem specific. Uh, my next option that I come up to is an option for multiple answers so allowed or is there only one answer that is correct? And for my particular quiz, I only have one answer that's correct. I can shuffle answer choices here. I can determine uh, how it is that I want the numbers for the answers to be shown. And then I get to the options of where I am entering my uh, answers. Each choice box has a place for an answer, a grade, and feedback. This is where you enter answer specific feedback for students to see if you want to. It's not required. So go ahead and enter your answer uh, in the answer field. And um, I am going to pause. I'm going to enter all four of my answers, and then we'll discuss the grade option. I have my answers entered. And at this point, I'm going to go through and I'm going to assign the grade of 100% to the correct answer choice. Um, and my correct answer choice is verifying that it was sent to the correct printer. So I'm going to set this as, as 100%. Obviously, in this case, if you uh, set this so that there were multiple correct answers back up at this location, uh, and say there were two correct answers, then each grade uh, should be set at 50% and so on in that manner. So I'm going to continue scrolling on down. If you need more than five answer choices, you have an option for clicking uh, to get more answer choices. Uh, and then, of course, there are additional options for feedback. For setting of penalties, if you have um, your quiz set up for multiple attempts. And there is an option, finally, uh, for tagging. I believe I read that the tagging feature was still in development with the version of Moodle that we're using. So for now, I wouldn't suggest using it. So finally, I'm going to save changes.
At this point, you would continue adding several more questions to build your test. So I have about four questions here for my tech quiz. And once you have a couple of questions, you can start building your test. And quite simply, remember the little uh, name that we gave the question? Here's where you can start to identify uh, some specifics around the questions this, that you entered. So I'm just going to go ahead, if I check that box clear at the top, it's going to select all of my options. And just because it's the quiz that I just now am setting up, I want to go ahead and enter all of these over. So I can check all of them. I'll just simply click Add to Quiz. And then here's where I can start to see uh, my quiz being built. So that's it for building the quiz. So now let's look at this from the student perspective. I'm logged in as a student here, and just to access the quiz, I scroll to the block where you built it. I click the name of the quiz, and when it launches as a student, I will see some of the parameters you put on the quiz. Multiple attempts, how it will be rated, and other quiz information like that. So for now, I'll just click Attempt the Quiz. And with the time limit that was placed on the quiz, the students are going to get a pop-up just to ensure that they really are ready to start the quiz. So I'll go ahead and click Start. And once the quiz starts, notice the time starts as well. In general, you can see there are multiple problems per page. My questions and answers have all been shuffled. So students will just simply select the answer they think is correct. So I'm going to go through and select just a couple of these. I'm not even going to try to um, go back and read some of them, but I do want to uh, I do want to flag one of the questions. All right, so I have my answer selected. With the, one of my questions flagged, I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. If the question remains flagged when the students try to submit the quiz they'll get a visual reminder right here that for some reason they had flagged this particular question. Now they can either return to the attempt, assuming there is enough time left, or they can go ahead and submit all and finish, in which case the quiz will just submit whatever answer they had selected. So let's just go ahead and submit all and finish. And notice that the students again have to verify that they really are ready to finish and to submit. I'm going to go ahead and just click Submit and Finish, but it's kind of a nice double check. Because of the feedback option that I left on the quiz, and even without entering a bit of my own personal feedback, students still see immediately their overall percentage and the answers they selected along with indicators of correctness. <laughs> you can see I did not do very well, but I did not read either. <laughs> and now I'm logged back in as the teacher. To get the quiz results, I'm going to click the quiz option, and then you can see how many attempts have been submitted. Once I click that link, I can scroll down and I can see the students who have submitted. I can see their overall score, and I also can see the individual answers that they selected for each question. Notice that although there are download options, you still will need to physically transfer grades from your Moodle course to your Infinite Campus Gradebook. This wraps up the quiz module. Take some time now to go through and build a quiz in your Moodle course. Use at least five different question options to include in the quiz. I then suggest that you also log in with your generic student account to view it from the student's perspective as well.